sales, the marketing, the operations, the finance, the strategy. And so I was, you know, I got married young because, you know, I'm a good, I'm, I'm a great student, right? Get a job, get married. Okay, I can do those two things. Right. But, right. <laughs> Dr. Lana, my husband, <laughs> my husband had a checkbook, a muscles, <laughs> and a car. That seems like it should be a good husband. <laughs> Because again, my parents didn't tell me how to find a husband or what the attributes are to find a good husband. They just said, find a husband. I'm like, these look like the things a husband would be. Mm -hmm. not, not a good tactic, right? We all know that now. Now I'm a little more seasoned, trained my children differently, right? So I got married young, had kids young, and the reality of that marriage wasn't, you know, meant to be, right? There was a lot of, dra of drama because I learned how to be in love on soap operas. So we had lots of drama. <laughs> You know, and I grew up in a very abusive home as a child. And so that was love, right? If they're yelling at you, hitting you, that must be love. Mm. And so when I had kids, I realized I didn't want my kids to see this. And I didn't want my kids to experience that. I really got clear that, you know, I experienced that and I don't ever want anyone to experience that. So I moved out when my children were 18 months and six months old. Now, you know, girl, if you're leaving when that baby's six months old, <laughs> you are miserable. <laughs> And I use humor to deflect. So it's not funny, but that's just how I cope. That's one of my coping me mechanisms is just, you know, try to, try to look at the funny in it. And so being a single mom, I had to really figure out how to hustle and how to make money. So I had no child support. I had no alimony, right? That was not something that was negotiated or I knew, even knew how to negotiate on my behalf. And so I've had to figure out how to make money. And being a hairdresser, you're an entrepreneur. And so I just, I really started looking at my kids need shoes. They need their tuition for their preschool. You know, I need to hustle. And that's why I really fell in love with business is just wow. understanding, wow, how do I grow this business? How do I turn this vocation into a business? And so I became one of the top professionals in the industry, right? When I was a top 1% of the nation, top 10% of the world. And that was just by the dollars that I produced. And it really came from that hunger. That's awesome. That I mean, I think so many women in our tribe can relate to that. And I think my question to you then would be, so when you started to even use that moment of, you know, getting out of abuse and moving past how you grew up, you definitely had a, some kind of fight within you to say, you know what, Susie, there's more. And I want to ask you, what would you say to that new business owner or that woman that kind of might be in that same position that you were in that feels completely overwhelmed, that asks themselves, can I really do this? I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to start. I feel so overwhelmed. Like, what would you actually tell that woman if they were listening to you and they had the same situation? That's a really great question. And the response that comes off, up is make it non-negotiable and quitting is not an option. Like quitting wasn't an option for me. I didn't have a fallback career. I didn't have a husband that would take care of me. And I coach businesses all over the world. And the thing that I see with women is they have a back door. I didn't have a back door, right? So they either have another income from their husband or you know, they've got a, a, a big safety net financially. So they don't have to be as serious, right? So take quitting off the table. Like, Make it non-negotiable, like I'm gonna make this work no matter what. Because I didn't have a choice. I had to make it work no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so when you take that off the table, you do things differently. You act differently. You, you stay up late, you get up early, you, know, you do that extra mile, you try to figure out, like you go to that extra meeting that you don't want to, that networking meeting, or you get on a plane and you don't want to, or get a car and you don't want to. You know, there's so many times where divine calling says do it and we get lazy and we go, oh, I don't really, I don't feel like it. Well, I don't feel like it every day too, mm -hmm. right? But what do you need to do to show up and show out, right? Get tuned in, tapped into what my purpose is. And I would say that's another thing to really look at what's that passion that you have? What's that burning passion that you know? Because then you don't want to quit. Like I do what I do because I love it. If I can make a difference for one or a hundred, I, I love what I do. And I do it because I didn't have mentors like you, mentors like me, right? It, back in the day, now I love my men, I love men, but back in the day, it was just overweight white men teaching business. And I, <laughs> I wanted to see 
like a woman and a powerful woman talking about numbers and finance and strategy and networking. And, you know, I couldn't really relate. And so for me, that, that really became the teaching side to go, there needs to be more of us, right? And there's plenty for all of us. I love that because in one of your uh, entries, and you guys make sure you subscribe to Miss Susie Carter's site, you talk about how women, we kind of deflect, even if we're in a relationship, you kind of say, woman, you need to own your voice and own your responsibility. And you really talk about how, you know, at times women just say, oh, you know, my spouse will deal with it until something unfortunately happens. And then that person might feel so overwhelmed and not know, oh, wait a minute, what, where, what is going on my finances? How do I, you know, how do I access what my financial goals are? And can you talk about that for a little bit? Because I think some, some women do feel like, well, I have a cushion here, but they may realize or may want to do more in terms of having more voice in their own financial planning. Right. So when you look at anything that brings us adversity, anything that brings us pushback really challenges our character. Now, I'm going to be so bold to say, as a woman of color, meaning you, you have faced that. And that, that almost like it gets you fired up like, oh, no, you're not. Right. You're not going to tell me I can't. You're not going to tell me I'm not equal. And we've all felt that way as women. Equal pay. Right. For equal time. You know, but there's that bigger conversation to go, what's that thing that really lights me up and that I can be a stand for? There's that saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So what are you standing for? Like, I'm a stand that we as women make the money we deserve to earn. And we make all the money that we choose to earn because we're entrepreneurs. So we get to earn as much or as little as we choose. And the reality is, if you look at your life and you look at what's in your life, that's what you're really committed to. Like when I was young, back in the day, that was that drama. I was committed to that. I didn't know it at the time, right? I wasn't enlightened. <laughs> now I'm committed to financial prosperity. I'm committed to making a difference in the world, right? And I'm committed to having fun doing it. Those are my three criteria in working with a partner. Like when you and I first met, that was a criteria. I'm like, is she fun? Because I got to have fun, right? Do, are we making a difference? And can we make a profit? Not just money but make a profit because you need to make a profit and I need to be a pro make a profit. And if someone's not aligned with all three of those things, I don't want to play. Right. So get really clear. What's that thing? And then re go, what, who would I need to be? And I looked at this, who did I need to be for my children so that they can grow up to be powerful women in the world? 